ask questions of Wyatt, please raise your hand again because we've uh, we've erased those. Uh, we're going to open up though with uh, questions from Spencer Brook from Letterman Row. Spencer, Wyatt, in the preseason, you guys talked about. Uh, I think the quote was beating the brakes off these guys. Um, now that it's finally, what's, what's the emotion like for you? What's going through your mind this week? You know, I mean, I feel like every year it's, it's the same goal, which which is what we had mentioned earlier with that. But, you know, I mean, more importantly, I mean, this is why you come to Ohio State and playing games like this. So um, this is a huge week for us. I mean, the emotions are at an all-time high. Everything's critical this week. Um, every practice rep, um, just everything. I mean, from the offseason preparing for this moment, uh, this, this is a huge week for us. So um, execution's at an all-time high. Next, next up, Clay Hall, WSYX, Channel 6. Clay? Hey, Wyatt. Uh, from that comment, it seems clear that you would never, ever take these guys for granted or too lightly. You're a 30-point favorite, et cetera. It seems like there's uh, a standard, right? You do not deviate on how good or bad they are. Uh, that, that's very correct. I mean, uh, we, we don't look at it as, you know, as far as their records or anything like that goes. I mean, when we step on that field, the scoreboard says 0-0, zero, zero, uh, despite, you know, what the records are leading up to that moment. So you, you can't take anyone lightly, especially um, team up north. I mean, it, it's, it's a rivalry game, and I know that they're going to give it their all, and just like how we're going to give it our all. And you, you can't take anything for granted because, it's, you know, you start taking teams – especially a team like this for granted, that's when they can come up and, and surprise you. So you, we're not going to allow that to happen. So this is up to this point, the most important game of the year. Thank you. Next up, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports Online. Dennis? Hey, Wyatt. Um, if for some reason you guys can't play enough games to get in the Big Ten championship game and you're still undefeated. Have, have you done enough to get to the playoff? Has Ohio State done enough? I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, as far as really that goes, um, you know, it's really hard for me to have an answer about that just because, you know, truly we're, that's out of our concern. I mean, I know that's not our focus, but, you know, with, with this type of situation, with you know, everything that's been going on, with the crisis that we're in, we, we've just been learning just to take it one day at a time you know, and kind of just take it as the information's given to us. So um, as far as that goes, you know, I, once it gets to that certain time, you know, we need to worry about it, then I'm, I'm, I'll have a better answer for you. But until then, I'm, I'm focused on that team up north. All right, thank you. Next up, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Joey? Why, toward the end of the, the Michigan State game, you, you came out and, and were icing your knee for a, a bit on the sideline. Just wanted to see how you're doing and how you're feeling um, after that play. Yep, I, I will be all good. Uh, I, I'm, I'll, I'll be playing this week, and, you know, I've been, been getting a bunch of treatment, so I, I'll be ready to go this week, without a doubt. Obviously, you were the, you were the one guy last week who was also – not playing a new position. Um, what was what was that experience like where you had kind of four new guys around you playing different spots on the O-line? You know, I mean, I feel like a lot of it just had to do with our culture. Um, obviously, going into it, I, you know, it, it sucked for guys like, you know, Josh Myers and, and Thayer and Nick Petit, especially with uh, Nick Petit, who worked so hard to get to this point and been having a heck of a year. And, um, you know, to to not be able to play in that game with the way it happened, you know, it's very unfortunate. So going into this game, you know, I, I feel like for everyone that had the opportunity to play, we took it besides ourselves to realize that it, it's not about us. It's about the people that can't be here. And um, I feel like that ultimately led to a lot of success we had uh, playing up front. And, you know, guys weren't playing for themselves, even those guys where it was their first opportunity starting it, they were playing for something that's, that's bigger than themselves. So uh, I feel like that had a lot to do with our success. Next up, Stephen Hellwagon, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, Wyatt, just looking at the uh, champions, it looked like four of the five guys uh, on the offensive line graded as champions, including the three first-time starters, just... 
<coughs> excuse me, as you guys went back over the tape, what was it in particular that those guys were able to accomplish? And, and it seems like the future is really bright when you have plugged three guys right in there and, and they, they could take right over. Yeah, you know, looking back at the tape, uh, it goes on to that week what Coach Stubb was preaching. You know, it's you don't have to go out there and do something special. You know, you got to do your job and do it to the highest of your ability. So looking back at the tape, those guys have stepped in, you know, that they, they weren't going extra and beyond. They, they were doing their assignments and they were playing at a high level. And I would probably say the biggest thing that I took away from all those new guys that stepped in was, you know, the effort that was shown. I mean, there was a couple of plays where, you know, you had DeWan, 20 yards down the field, finishing guys. And you had Matt Jones finishing guys and having nasty double teams and just trying to look for a finish. And, you know, same thing with Harry as well. So I, I just feel like um, the effort was at an all time high. And, you know, if you play hard and you play with great effort, great things will happen. Just follow up, uh, if you're able to play Michigan, looks like this, one of the strengths of the team is their defensive line uh, and pay if he's healthy supposed to be one of the top uh, rushers in the country. Just what's your thought about going up against those guys and maybe the challenge that they're going to bring? Well, I mean, uh, they're a great team, no doubt, um, especially, you know, with the guys that they're going to be having up front. I mean, it, it's going to be a challenge. And we, we, we're we going to step up and be ready for the occasion. And, you know, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, the execution and practice this week is at all-time high because, as you mentioned, he is a great player. And they also have other great players amongst their defense so, I mean, it's going to be a great challenge for us, but we're more than ready to accept the challenge. Thank you. Up next, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Wyatt, I think, you know, everybody was holding their breath when you were heading over to the sideline. You were asked about that knee on, on Saturday. What were you thinking uh, when you were getting treated there? Did you have any concerns that it might be more serious than what it's turned out to be? Um, you know, obviously, I... Uh, there was, there was a bunch of things that were kind of just flowing through my mind during that moment. But, um, you know, I, I knew that I'd be able to bounce back from it. Uh, you know, we have a great training staff here at Ohio State. So I've just been getting treatment religiously. And there's no doubt in my mind that I'm ready and I'm playing. And I feel great. It feels better. So I, I'm ready to get after it. Thanks, man. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Why is, the, is there any hope that some of those guys will be back, uh, the ones we missed last week on the offensive line? You know, I mean, I, I'm really, I can't really truly answer that. I mean, there's so much protocol that goes into it with right. COVID in the Big Ten. So, I mean, I, I've just been, you know, waiting as eagerly as you guys to find out because, um, uh, you know, they still have to go through. I'm, I'm sure there's a huge process. I mean, I, I'm not very sure, but uh, I definitely am feeling optimistic, though, to say the least. So, ho you know, hopefully we can get some of those guys back. And it's going to be a, you know, a, a different kind of senior day. Um, and I, obviously you're not a senior, but, um, you know, it's it's a special day. The fact that um, it's going to be so different. I mean, what do you think the stadium's going to be like for that game, senior day? And, and other than parents, there are really not going to be fans in the stands. You know, I, I obviously not dealing with fans has been huge for us. I mean, Buckeye Nation's been great all my years here. So, you know, it, it's definitely going to be a weird feeling running out and not having that type of atmosphere. But I would say the fact that, you know, parents would be allowed there and just really the type of game that we're going into. I mean, I, I feel like that that says enough about it itself. So the guys that have the opportunity to run out there this weekend and, and um, you know, getting ready to face that team up north, I'm sure that that will definitely have a huge, you know, boost as far as morale. And but I mean, obviously, it's going to be weird not having fans there. So, yeah. Next up, Tony Girdman, Buckeye Scoop. Why? What's your favorite thing about the Michigan rivalry? I would just say the history. Um, you know, growing up as a California kid, I, I grew up watching the USC UCLA rivalry, so I, I never really paid too much attention as, until I got, um, you know, up in high school and was getting recruited by Ohio State. And once I got here, I really truly understand, you know, the history behind it and um, just all the great players and their stories from when they played, um, you know, in, in this this game and just truly what it means, um, not only to 
uh, us football players and all the coaches, but, you know, to Ohio as a nation going against that team up north and just how much this game truly matters. And I would probably say the history of it is um, what interests me the most about it. Have you had a former player just pull you aside and tell you about it, what it, what it means to them? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, especially um, last year, you know, uh, as far as with the O-line goes, we all have a group chat where, you know, there's guys like Pat Fline, and Billy Price and, you know, Jamarco Jones and all, you know, and the list goes on and on of all the past players. And, you know, they all send us, you know, words of encouragement that week and just how much this game matters, man. And to come out with it without, you know, nothing without a, without a W. So, um, you know, I'm sure we'll be receiving those same texts as the week goes on. Thanks. Next up, Nathan Baird, cleveland.com. Yeah, well, you know, early in your career, you were in a situation where you kind of first got pushed into um, a, a game situation because of, uh, of unavailability of the starter ahead of you. And then to have, you know, three of them coming in at one time, I guess, and that was a veteran on this team. What did you sort of see as your most important uh, job last week to help get those guys in the right mindset to play? You know, just truly being a leader for those guys. I mean, I feel like as far as leadership goes, for me, it got tested this last week and uh, truly how, uh, at least the way I took it, you know, I, I felt like I would have failed those guys if I didn't prepare them enough to be able to go out there and play confidence. So just, just truly just, you know, giving them the confidence that they need, you know, going in practice, um, you know, helping them out with footwork, you know, any questions that they had, they could come to me. If they wanted to watch extra film, they could come to me and just really just trying to instill the utmost confidence in these guys because, you know, I, I firmly believe prior to even going into that game that no matter who we put in there, they were going to get the job done. And honestly, you know, after that Tuesday practice, the week started rolling on, it just felt like we were really starting to gel. And I feel like that's what ultimately led into the game. So, I, I would say the, probably the biggest thing for me was just, you know, leading those guys out there, obviously, um, you know, and having Harry there to help, you know, with, even though he, uh, this is first year starting, but he knows what it's like playing in the game, you know, compared to those uh, two, compared to those three other guys that, you know, never started in the game before. So I would just say the leadership aspect of it. Max Ray in particular, I think had never really taken a, a snap, maybe one snap or barely any in his career. Why was he able to step in? What is it about him? He was able to step in in, in those circumstances and, and succeed right away. You know, I mean, honestly, I just feel like it also has a lot to do with the culture of the room. Uh, you know, me and Max, you know, prior to him playing, um, you know, uh, this last game, you know, me and him were very close. So once, once he got the opportunity, uh, to play, you know, I, I was excited for him, and I just felt like what really led all these guys to go out there and play, you know, fearless was just the fact that no one's asking you guys to, you know, go out there and, just, you know, play a crate, like be like Superman playing a crazy game, you know, just do your assignment, do what you're supposed to do and play at a high, you know, level of effort and the rest will, you know, come. So, I feel like with Max, it was the same thing. I mean, that was a guy who always went hard in practice, you know, yet he might not get those reps during, you know, the game on Saturday. He was always a guy that was always fully locked in. And I feel like with all those guys that played, honestly, it, it had a lot to do with themselves because even though they weren't playing, they were always asking questions in meetings and, you know, being aware of what's going on and, and not messing up during plays when that, you know, when it was their opportunity to go in, so. Next up, Jason Lewis. Jason? Hey, Wyatt. Um, as an offensive lineman, how much pride do you take in the fact that, you know, over the last five years, you guys have averaged more than 160 yards on the ground per game than Michigan? And how important is it in a game like this to control the ground game like you guys have? Uh, running the ball is very important. I mean, and, you know, like you said, with those stats, well, it means everything to us because – you know, obviously passing is great, but when it comes down to it, I mean, the team that can run the ball is going to win the game. So I know going into this week, um, you know, that, that's going to be a high emphasis, but just really just being able to control the line of scrimmage. I mean, they have great players up front. That's going to be a huge test for us this week. And then when, when you think about this rivalry, when you see that block M, when you see that maze in blue, what comes to mind? 
just everything that we've worked for. I mean, from the off season, having the team up north drill and having to hear this stupid LL Cool J song, man, that I hate. And, uh, you know, every time I hear that song, it just makes me think of them. So there, there, there's a lot of stuff that gets, you know, a lot of hatred that goes towards that logo, uh, you know, and all the stuff that we have to do during the off season, all the sit-ups and push-ups, everything. So there's a lot of stuff that's definitely geared towards them uh, as far as hatred goes. Thank you so much. And last questions for Wyatt will come from Rob Aller, the Columbus Dispatch. Rob? Hey, Wyatt, you said you grew up not really paying attention to the rivalry. Now that you're here, you are. How, how close of attention do you pay to what's going on up there, whether it's the coaching situation and status? Do you keep tabs on things or, or not? I mean, I, I feel like it would be, you know, unrealistic not to at least, you know, hear stuff about it. But as far as keeping tabs on, I, I've learned, especially with this year, you really can't dive into that because, you know, it would just kind of make you go crazy trying to figure out what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm aware that they have a, you know, a situation going on down there. But uh, the way I'm approaching it is just, you know, we're playing in this game and I'm getting ready to go play in this game. And until I hear otherwise, you know, I, I'm just going to roll with it. Did it surprise you or does it surprise you how obsessed the Ohio State fans and the whole culture is with this game and with Michigan? Uh, yeah, yes. No, it definitely does. I remember my uh, first year when I was walking around campus and I saw that, you know, M's were crossed off of red tape. I was like, you know, I was trying to figure out if it was vandalism at first, but uh <laughs> It definitely told me a lot about what, what's going into this game. And, you know, really as my years went on, I, I truly understood, you know, how serious this is. Wyatt, thank you so much for your time. Have a great afternoon and an excellent week of practice. Thanks again. Thank you.